Joy overflows, joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows, joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will praise your name. Glory, hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will worship you. I will worship you. Worship you. I will praise your name. Glory, hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. Waiting, I go give to you my praise. Ooh. My praise, waiting, I go give to you my praise. Ooh, my praise. Joy overflows, joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows, joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will praise your name. Glory, hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. Waiting, I go give to you my praise. Ooh, my praise. Waiting, I go give to you my praise. Ooh. My praise, you don't give me money. My praise, ooh, my praise, you know I'm money. My praise, ooh, my praise, you don't give me success. My praise, naive you want. My praise, you don't give me all things. My praise. And my heart, naive, you want it, I go give to you all my heart. I surrender all, all of it to you, waiting, I go give to you my praise. On that you take my praise. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. People, I'm really excited. I'm really glad. Like, there's just so many things that God keeps doing in my life that I don't even know how to explain. I don't know how to express it. Sometimes I know I don't even deserve it, but He still goes ahead and does it. Like, we didn't deserve to be where we are today. We didn't deserve Christ to die for us, but He died anyways. He died anyways. And I'm forever grateful for that. I can't thank God enough for all the amazing things that he gets to do for me. He gets to do in my life. He gets to do for the people around me. I can't thank him enough for the amazing people and amazing things he has connected me to that are taking me to the next level, that are growing me, that are, are building me, making me a better version of myself. I really can't thank God enough. Um, I'm super duper grateful for it. And, uh, I just want to thank him. I want to thank him real good. I want to thank him real specially for all the amazing things that he has done in my life. He's doing and he's still to do because he says in everything, I'll walk together for good to them that love me and I called according to my purpose. And he says he's the author and finisher of our faith. So if he starts something, he finishes it. He's a God of completion. He takes everything to completion. So people of God, don't fret, don't give up, don't back out. God is there and is ready to do a lot of amazing things in your life. If only you let him, you have to surrender. He has given you every single thing you need in the package of salvation. But he doesn't want all of that. He wants your heart. He wants you to give your heart as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. He has given you money. He doesn't want money. He has given you good health. He has given you success. He has given you a bright future, a great career, a great um, business, a great job, whatever it is. He has given you this really amazing things, but that's not what he wants. He wants your heart. He wants you. Welcome, Mr. Daniel Bongsi Akwaba. It is saying.
I hope you're good. I hope you're doing great. God bless you. So if you're just tuning in, it's a chapter a day where we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we should and should not do as Christians so that we can live a beautiful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. If that's your desire, mm, then you're in the right place. You are in the right place. Don't you know, just stay connected and we're sure that God is going to speak to you in a very special way today. We are definitely sure of that because God has been doing so from day one. Since we started in 2021, 1st of January 2021, since we started, God has been faithful so far. And we're now in the Old Testament on the seed book. We're done and dusted with the New Testament. We're now in the Old Testament, the seed book. I'm sure you all are having a great time. I'm sure that God is still doing wonderful and marvelous things in all of our lives. Stay connected. So on a normal basis, we get to pray hand over the session to God. We do the birthday party where we actually talk, um, say things to people that are in our birthday book. And then after that, we go ahead and uh, get to the Bible party. And today our Bible party is taken from the book of Joshua chapter 14 and he has 15 verses, 14, 15. Okay, Joshua chapter 14 has 15 verses. That's gonna be a short read. And it, it looks like we're gonna have a very short time on the chapter today. So, excuse moi, let me drink water. Okay, that's about it. Okay, so let's go. We have to pray and hand over the session to God and get right on to the birthday party. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for all the amazing and awesome things you keep doing in our lives and the life of our parents, friends, relatives, and loved ones. We can thank you enough, Lord. Our hearts are full of praise. Our hearts are full of rejoicing and dancing and singing to the glory of God. Father, we pray this day, O Lord, and we come before your throne of grace that you're going to speak to us in a special way. Let questions be answered. Let spirit be, spirits be relieved. Let there be direction. Let there be guidance. Let there be answers to prayers. Let there be answers to questions that are pending in the hearts of your people. You know the hearts of your people and you know exactly how to speak to us and what to say to us at every point in time. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you always hear and answer in Jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving increase while i decrease so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen felt and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day thank you lord for answering us already in jesus name we pray amen let's get straight up to the birthday party and our birthday party today we have three people the first person is mr ella jeff mr ella jeff we actually met on social media facebook and we became very good friends of course he's also one of those persons who get to encourage me from time to time when we get to talk and have a conversation he encourages me to be my best and do my best and keep doing what i'm doing because i'm doing great you know sometimes those little sayings just saying that you might think well it means nothing but it means a lot to us um basically not just me but a lot of people who create content and put out there on social media whatever social media platform it takes extra grace it takes energy as well it takes time it takes diligence that people put into these things to make them get out there so when people sometimes it's as bad as people come under your post and they say oh you didn't do great you're, you're not doing anything this your post is nothing and all that it's really painful it's hurtful you know so when you have people who are around there encouraging you and telling you oh you're doing great keep at it um god bless you and all that it really feels awesome there's no words enough to explain how great that feels so thank you so much mr ella jeff for always doing that every time you get the chance to and then the next person is mom anastasia valeria um this is one of my very good friends students mr eric jimifo i told you guys some time ago that He's one person who always pushes my things to the forefront, tries to make my, like, should I say my voice heard in every little area that it can be heard. So he always pushes my things like that to people's faces. So um, this student of his 
saw some of my videos she also wanted to learn they gave them homework and assignments on some of the videos that i put out there i've not been putting out videos lately you all should just forgive me i'll get to it so um, i guess i get overwhelmed i thought i could handle all of them but uh I couldn't I couldn't but I know that God is gonna give me the grace and he's gonna make it possible when the time is right for me to start posting those videos again a lot of people have asked me why I don't post anymore but I guess some people have just realized that because I do a chapter a day every day so they know that's probably the reason why and I think basically um, it's partly the reason why and then I know since I lost my hard disk my hard disk got bad and all those things I've just been Maybe I've still not gotten over it, even though I say I have. My hard disk got bad, my laptop hard disk got bad, and I lost a lot of information and stuff like that. So maybe that's what is making me not to be like pushed to want to go back and start doing videos on YouTube. But I would, I would get back to it. So you guys don't, don't fret. So Anastasia was one of those persons that would come and she would ask me questions. She want to learn. She want to know. She wanted, they wanted to have a private session with me like a private class that I'll be teaching them online and stuff like that. So, uh, or help them do, there was a certain assignment that I gave them to do and it had to do with my videos. So they wanted um, a better explanation and all that. So she actually connected to me like that. She's a very nice person, very humble. And she's a Russian. <laughs> yeah, she's a Russian. So that was my first Russian friend I ever had. And uh, I think the only one is that, yeah. That's the one and only Russia friend I've ever had. That was the first and the only one I've had till today. Happy birthday to you, Mom Anastasia Valeria. And then the last but not the least is Mr. Nsaikila Melanin. Melane. Melane. I hope I pronounced that like right. But Mr. Nsaikila, I know that one I pronounced it right. Mr. Nsaikila, I actually met him in the was it in a group of smart people? No, I actually met him on a mutual friend's post and his comments were really amazing and I decided to connect with him. That's me for you. When I see people who are smart and I know I can gain from them, I look for them. Like I would look for them like my life depended on it. That's exactly what I do. So I, I actually saw his comment on the mutual friends post and it was really amazing. And I knew like I had to connect to this guy. And then I sent him a friend request. He accepted and he, I kept following him and his posting on different places. And then we got connected. He's a very nice person, also very humble, very welcoming and very friendly. And like I said, for some weird reason, I know a lot of high profile people but these high profile people are kind of so humble that when you see them you basically not even believe they're high profile people yes that that's true a lot of times i'm like how did i even get favor to like know these kinds of people you know so it's actually really um amazing he's a very nice person he's also going about changing the world impacting lives you know giving great information to people that can help them be their best and make them to be their best versions. And he's also one of those persons who gets to encourage me to keep doing what I'm doing, considering the fact that I love it. And uh, I'm really grateful that we got to connect with each other. So once again, happy birthday, Mr. Ella Jeff. Happy birthday, Mom Anastasia Valeria. And happy birthday, Mr. Nsaikila Melane. I hope I pronounced it well. Welcome, woman of God. Um, Fire, Mom Tipa Melvis is in the house. Oh my God. I wish she was going to send me a request and do amen. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and pray for the birthday people and then get right on to the Bible party. I said the Bible party today is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 14, and it has 15 verses. So let's get ready. She's laughing her hearts out. <laughs> she likes that part of. A chapter a day she really loves it and there was one time she actually did it for us I wish she, we can get another opportunity for her to do it again I'll be very grateful and of course the people who are going to be receiving it will be very grateful as well I know she's probably just getting out from work and she's still coming here to come and support us to come and listen to come and be a part of the the show oh my people it's in the building did I see that right 
Mr. Oh my God. I hope. Sometimes I get, I get mixed up with the profile pictures, but I think it's the one. Um, I just saw a click, but I'm not sure. I think it should be the one. I hope it's the one. Um, greetings to you. It's been like forever. We've not spoken. Hope you're good. Hope mommy is also good. And uh, hope everything is moving on well with you. I pray so. So let's get to pray for the birthday people and get right on with the Bible party. Father, we thank you for this additional and beautiful year you've added to the lives of these people who were born today. We pray you open the windows of heaven and release your blessings, choices, blessings upon their lives, O oh God, and rebuke every devourer. That they're going to prosper, they're going to go forward, they're going to go to the top and stay there permanently. Because you're going to teach them the strategies and techniques and the methods that are necessary for them to be able to not only get to the top but stay there permanently. Father, I pray that you cause them to be trailblazers, pace setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Lord, cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before man. Let their light shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Father, I pray that as you open these beautiful pages of their lives, you're going to write awesome stories. Stories that will keep them singing, dancing, rejoicing, and giving you glory because you deserve it. Father, perfect all that concerns them. Give them a Psalms 126 state that when you turn their captivity around, they'll be like they that dream. Whatever the lady hands on, prosper it. Wherever they tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you enlighten their eyes, open their, enlighten the eyes of their understanding so they can see those they're supposed to be destiny helpers to and help these people when the time is right. And I pray, oh God, that their own destiny helpers are also going to be strategically positioned all around. So when they cry out for help, help is going to be available instant. Lord, we thank you because we know you're a faithful God. You always hear and answer us. Clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor so that money is going to make money in their pockets, blessings is going to make blessings in their lives, and favor is going to make favor in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you open doors that no man can show. And show every door that is not of you. Divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress. And divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress. Father, I pray, O oh God, now you're going to teach their hands to make world. You're going to teach their fingers to battle. You're going to teach their hands to war because you're a faithful father. I pray, O oh God, that you're going to bring opportunities to them that only you can give. Lord, even when they call on you, you answer them and show them great and mighty things which they've never, ever known. Lord, cause them to stay focused on you. Stay connected to you because you're the only source where everything comes from. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to lead them in the right path. Even as the fulfilled purpose, your glory will be revealed through their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And when they come to that place in their life where it comes to everybody's life from time to time, where we feel like we want to give up, we want to back out, like we can't do this no more, they're going to hear your loud and clear voice that will say, this is the way you walk that we need. So they're not going to stray the path. They're not going to depart from the, from the chorus of what you call them and purpose them to do. Thank you, ancient of days. Seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus, knowing you've heard and answered already. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for answering us. Thank you for doing way beyond what we've even asked in the lives of these people who were born on this particular day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Amen, people. And right now, we're getting on to the Bible party. Let's get the Bible party started. Get the Bible party started. Ready or not, here I come. Welcome, Mr. Marcus Mack. Hope you had a great day. Hope you're doing well. 
And of course, we're about to get on with the Bible party. Don't forget to share us out, share, 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 so that a lot more people can come in here and get blessed. Thank you for coming always. Thank you for participating always. Thank you for always, always supporting us in every way. We are very grateful. We don't take it for granted. And we say, God bless you. Joshua chapter 14. And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers of the tribe of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and for the Hal tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half tribe on the other side Jordan, but unto the Levites he gave none inheritance amongst them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in with their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did. And they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgar, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly follow the Lord my God. And Moses swear, swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet had trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord had kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kijathabar, which Abba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so like I said, a lot of this is just about um, how the lands were divided together and also how it's good to be keen to details, it's good to take down information and keep information because when the time is right, you're able to use that information. Maybe if Caleb didn't take note of what God had said to them as at that time, and they come right here however they get to share the land he had no choice he had to just go with whatever they gave him but he knew he knew exactly that god had promised him that this land was going to belong to him he didn't care what was going to happen and what what was what 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 gave him the courage to believe that that land was him the word of god it's in the word of god that we get to know the promises that god has made concerning our lives we can only experience these promises and this goodness when we know they exist, when we know they are there for us. If we don't know about, because we're not studying the word, if we don't know about it, how are we going to get them? We can't get them. It's in the Bible that I know that, um, for example, 
um, the Bible says the fruit of the womb is blessed. So you know that every child that's coming to you is a blessing. And of course, it says, it says um, for people who want to get married, it says, none shall lack their mate. It's from the Bible that you know, so you know that you cannot be. And it said, none in the land shall be barren. It was only for Micah who actually mocked David that she didn't give birth. Aside that, no other person was barren. So you, you can only know the promises that God has for you and claim them when you know they exist. And how do you know that they exist? By studying the word of God. It's God's love letter to mankind. And in this love letter, he made a whole lot of promises to us. You know how when you're reading that message from your loved ones, when you're reading that message from your, maybe your fiance or your fiance or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, when you're reading that message from that person, you're excited, you're just happy. There's some of the promises that they've made to you. When you go and stand in front of the pastor under the pulpit, you stand in the pulpit and then you're talking, you're making these vows to each other. It's so beautiful. You stand on those vows. You hold on those vows. I've seen people where sometimes their marriage is going somehow and, and they ask the husband or the wife would ask, you made this and this vow for me. Did you so soon forget those vows you made? Sometimes some people just made it out of excitement. There was butterflies in their tummies. You know, they were just head over heels for the girl or the guy. And so they were making promises. They were making things that are enormous. They're much more like politicians. Most politicians, they say a lot of things they don't mean. They say a lot of things they'll never do. But because they know that those are the things that the people want to hear. But it's not supposed to be so with us children of God. You have to say things you mean. That's exactly who God is. And if you say we're children of God and the spirit of the Lord dwells in us, then we're supposed to say things we mean. We shouldn't say things we don't mean. If we don't mean it, don't say it. The Bible says it's better not to make a vow than make a vow and not keep it. You're a fool. It's the same Bible that says don't call anyone a fool, but they describe someone who makes a vow and doesn't keep it as a fool. Then it's serious. It's serious. It's a bad term to use on someone, but they use it for people who make a vow and don't keep it. So you see, it's very tricky. One thing I do with people is I don't make vows. I don't make promises no more. I surprise you. If I come the day that you need the thing and you already have it, I can still give you. It's a plus. It's bonus. You have the thing double or you have more to use as opposed to I tell you that okay I'm going to get it for you and then for some weird reason sometimes even natural things even things beyond your control can happen and you don't get to meet the person anymore and that can be very frustrating because maybe the person would have gone searching for more maybe the person would have gone looking for more but because you promised that you were going to do whatever you had to do for them so they gave up on their search and then they're depending on you they're waiting on you and then you feel them it can be very devastating people it can be very devastating so yes it's very, very important. It's very, very important for us to know the things that God says to us. And we can only know them when we study them. Like I said, sometimes you study a scripture and that scripture will make no sense to you. Like you would so look through it and you ask God, Lord, what are you saying to me? It might make no sense. He might give you no rema like he always gives all the time. You know, he'll give you nothing from that scripture. But believe you me. A day will come when you would so need that scripture and God will surprise you. Oh yeah, I've been there so I know what I'm talking about. I've been there several times when I'm in a situation and the Holy Spirit gives me a scripture. I mean, I'm saying literally, sometimes I feel like, I don't even think it's a scripture. I feel like it's just a quote that God is giving me or it's just something that God is bringing my understanding to up until I go open the Bible and I realize that it was a scripture. And sometimes I'm surprised that I read it. Yes, but anyways, I've read through the Bible several times. I think three or, three or so. I'm not sure exactly, but I've read through the Bible a couple of times. So, of course, somehow... That thing should have been there because I've read it, because I've seen it before. It's in my subconscious. Our subconscious has a way of keeping some things that we think are not there up until something triggers it. When there's a trigger, it now comes up and then you're like, wow, 
there are some times as well some people are really annoyed me and i told myself i've forgiven them and i'd let go of everything and then they did some other thing oh my god how triggered i was i was shocked and i was like lord please help me father help me to really let go of these things help me to really deal with these things on the inside you know how those things happen to us and we don't even know that we still have them in our hearts we don't even know that they're still there we're telling ourselves that oh no i've forgiven the person i've let go it's over no i don't take it to heart anymore oh no up until there's a trigger darling you're going to be shocked at the things that are in your heart against some people and against some persons welcome mom jenny cutting girl camber welcome 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 hope you are good Talamat. and so it's actually really really beautiful when you stay on what god says when you take those things and take them seriously god's word is true it's certain it's here and amen if god says a thing it must surely come to pass the thing with us is we want god to just tell us the thing and tell us exactly immediately how it's going to happen in between no god doesn't do that for the most part god just tells you the thing and then he doesn't tell you what's going to happen between the time that he has told you to the manifestation oh yeah and you have to get ready, fix your mind, condition your mind to the fact that there are going to be challenges. There are going to be storms. There are going to be lots and lots of things you're going to encounter before the manifestation of that thing. Oh, yeah. That's how it always is. There's always an encounter. There's always a, a challenge. There's always a fight. There's always some, you know, because the enemy is not happy. That you're doing all this amazing stuff. You think the enemy is just going to sit somewhere and be smiling and be getting excited and congratulating you for being an amazing girl or an amazing guy. No, the enemy is not happy. He doesn't want you to be blessing life. He doesn't want you to be changing lives. He doesn't want you to be impacting people. So he's going to sit and strategize on how to get you. So you should be rest assured that there are going to be challenges. I've told us here that the Bible didn't use when unconsciously they didn't just feel like they wanted to use that word it was intentional when they say when it means it must happen when they say if it means it's a possibility it could or could not happen but when they say when it means it must happen so the bible says there's going to be a fire time there's going to be a water time there's going to be a flooding time there's going to be whatever pass through the waters pass through the fires when you pass through the whatever it shall not overwhelm you because god is with you so if you know, if you have the assurance, if you've seen it in the Bible that God has told you several times that I'm with you always till the end of time, would you be freaking out? No, you won't freak out because you know that one with God is majority. Oh yeah. If God is on your side on a thing you want to do, get on it because you have the majority on your side. Just God alone is majority. If God is on your side, you've won the battle. If God is on your side, you won the victory. Let's sing a hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won the victory. Let's sing a hallelujah, hallelujah. God has won it all. For me, that cannot hold me down. No, 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 cause I am unstoppable. That's right, I'm winning majestically, for sure. And I am unstoppable. Mm. Hallelujah, God has won the victory, let's sing a hallelujah, hallelujah, God has won it all for you, they cannot hold you down, no, 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 cause you are unstoppable that's right you see that in majesty 
Yes, sure. And you are unstoppable. God is a majority. If you're on the Lord's side, you never give up. You would overcome every situation. You would win the battle. You would go through the storm smoothly. Those storms may rise against you. Trials will come. There will be battles you have to fight. There will be mountains you have to climb. But God can never bring you this far to leave you. I don't know what you're going through right now. You just need to hold steadfast on the word of God. And when Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, went to Joshua and said, Oh my, oh my, oh my. I remember what God said to Moses. I remember what God said concerning this land. I remember what God said about my family. There was no turning back. There was no way this guy could refuse because he knew that that was the truth. When you hold on to the word of God, you can never go wrong. You can never go wrong with the word of God. The word of God has a final say. The word of God is the battle axe. The word of God is the yardstick. The word of God is the standard. If anybody is saying anything to you that is against the word of God, trash it. If you come on my live stream someday and I'm saying something that is out of the word of God, my darling, trash it. If I say that the first time, say it a second time, stop listening to me. I am leading you astray. Oh yes, it's about time we have to be true to ourselves. You know why? Because I'm human and sometimes I could miss it. Call me to other if you can. Princess, you said this and this and this. It's not in the Bible. You said this and this and this. No, I checked and I didn't see it. Was it just something that God said to you? Or is it really in the Bible or you know? Because there are some things like that. God can give you an instruction that is an individual instruction. It's just for you. It's just for you. It's not for everybody. It's just for you. And you take it and make it a thing for everybody. No, 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 no. God didn't send you. And then you begin to wonder why the people are not taking it in. Welcome, Mr. Abanda Gilbert. God bless you. Thank you for coming in. God bless you, bless you, bless you. And you wonder why people are not taking it in. They're not taking it in because it wasn't for them. It was for you. God was giving you an assignment and he was giving you the way to go about that assignment. It wasn't a general information for everybody. It was for you. And sometimes we wonder why people don't cue in with our vision. They don't understand it. It's not their vision, it's yours. And you can't be mad at them and then stop following your, uh, stop pursuing your vision because you're mad at people. You can't do that. Some of us, we get mad at our bosses, we get mad at our leaders. We're still there doing the job, why? Because we know we need the salary at the end of the month, right? It's the same thing. It's just that it seems like God is not here tasking you and following you up, but you eventually get your reward. So fulfilling your purpose has nothing to do with any other person but you. Those people don't know what God has told you in the secret place. Those people don't know how God is guiding you and directing you. All you need to do that God told us to do as vision bearers is to write down the vision, make it plain. They that read it will run with it because they will read it and understand it. Make it plain i was talking with a sister of mine yesterday it was today earlier in in the morning i was talking with her and we're saying something about how people go around using like some really really big grammar to communicate on social media the last time i checked if i use some of those big words i'm not communicating one social media and the internet is very fleeting so who has time to have to go and be checking the word in the dictionary it's a different thing entirely if you have a particular audience you want to get your information to. But I'm hoping that this video can get to like every single person. Every single person. And I want anybody who understands English to be able to understand me and get what I'm saying. So what is it about using like some really 
crazy high grammatic terms. What is it about? Like, who am I talking to? To myself? Is it just a show? No, it's not. So if an average person who speaks English and understands English cannot understand me, I'm not communicating. I'm not communicating. So we need to go to God and ask God how we need to do these things. People are only going to run with a vision when they can understand it. The Bible says write it and make it plain. Make it plain means people should be able to understand. It should be plain and simple and straightforward. And people should be able to see it and be able to run with it. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? So is your vision clear enough? Is it written? Mine is not. You all should forgive me. God needs to help me on that one. Well, a part of my vision is written down, like, but not like fully, fully. It's my coach that actually helped me. I never used to write nothing down. Mm. I just used to have it in my head. I never really used to write down. She told me to just write it down. Even if it's just sketchy, I should just sketch something, like, you know, just a sketchy vision mission and you know that kind of thing and it has really guided me that's it really given me perspective it has get, really given me an opportunity to be able to do better you know that's why i know i have to be on here doing a chapter a day even when some days i don't feel like it mm -hmm. because i have a vision and based on my vision it's not about whether i feel like it or not is that I know that there are lives that are going to be transformed and going to be impacted. There are people that God wants to address situations in their lives. And so it's not about me. It's bigger than me. So I can wait until I feel like it. It's not a matter of what I feel like it. It's a matter of doing what God wants. So people, basically... This particular scripture today, it was still, this particular chapter today, it was still showing us how the lands were shared. They were divided amongst the children of Israel. And we always hear that the Levites didn't have because the people were supposed to be working and giving to them their tithe and all those things. So that's how they were supposed to eat. And today we have some full-time pastors, but people still complain. They don't want to take care of them. They don't want to feed them. We want them to go to the throne room of God and bring a balanced diet for us but we don't want to give them what it takes for them to be comfortable enough and of a sound mind and get into the presence of god and bring us what we need it is sad it is sad it looks like pastors have become easy target for every people every person why because they don't retaliate but trust me when god would act on their behalf you would be stunned at what will happen to you and some of us will come and carry curses upon our lives and we go it's happening to us some future time some near future date and we're like god why is this happening to me you know you insulted a servant of god you accused the servant of god falsely you were throwing stones upon a servant of god when people were throwing stones and you knew you shouldn't be doing that i see even christians going on social media and spewing rubbish about men of god <laughs> moses did wrong oh Miriam and Aaron spoke about it. God gave Miriam, God allowed Miriam to get leprous. That was punishment for talking. Who gave you the right to talk about my servant? That's what God said. Moses did wrong. Oh. I'm saying, <laughs> people of God, see, you be careful. When people are talking about men of God and women of God and you're adding your voice to it. Be careful. Because it's not happening in the Ananias and Sapphira's way. We should not be taking this man of God for granted. Oh. We should not be taking women of God for granted. Oh. Anyway, as the, the, the pigeon palance says, any my head they for a neck. As you lay your bed, so shall you lie on it. People of God, let me try to fix the battery thingy. Oh my God. This ain't a good thing. I want to get our charger. But we're almost done, though. We're almost done. We're almost done.
Oh my God, let that stay steady. Let it not fall away on me. Welcome, Mr. Frank and Numer. Thank you for coming. God bless you. It's been like forever, forever. God bless you for coming. So yeah, let's stay on the Word of God. Let's know what the Word of God is saying to us by time and let's stick to it. And uh, it's about what God is saying to you as opposed to what other people are saying to you. And like I said, write the vision down, make it plain so you can remember it and you know that this is what God has done. This is what God is doing. This is the step you're taking. So um, Caleb knew exactly what God had said. He had probably written it down somewhere and he was holding on to it and hoping that it would eventually manifest. And the day of manifestation came, he had to play his part by reminding Joshua and saying, Joshua, you remembered when we all went to spy the land and when we came back and what God promised, you know, what God said to Moses since the time of Moses, Moses came and died and everything. And if he did not hold that, if he did not hold on to that, he probably have missed it. Thank God Joshua is also a servant of God and he probably was there because it's Joshua and Caleb who, who gave the, the true word. They held on to the word of God and gave the right report and uplifted the hearts of the people. When you always carry the right report, you have the tendency of uplifting the hearts of people. When you carry the good news, you have the, uh, the, the tendency of uplifting the hearts of people. The good news is Christ and him crucified. The good news is salvation, which Jesus Christ brought unto all men. Even while we are yet sinners, he died for us. Let's believe in that. So what word has the Lord given you? What has the Lord said to you? Does it look challenging? Does it look difficult? At some point, I'm sure Caleb would have surely felt bad. Moses is dead. What's going to happen now? Hmm. God still got you covered. If God has said it, he will do it. If God has said it, he will do it. It doesn't matter whether the sun divides or the sun or the earth goes to the left and the waters go to the right. If God has said it, he will do it. He has a track record of keeping his word. Oh Lord, you are back, you are mighty. Oh Lord, you are back, you are mighty. He has a track record of keeping his word. Check anywhere, anytime, any day. God always finishes what he starts. He always accomplishes the purpose. The word of God always, he never goes out and comes back void. It always does what it goes out to do. What are you giving life to? What kind of words are you speaking? Say life and death are in the power of the tongue. What are you saying? What are the things you're saying? Are you saying the right things? Why are you just saying things because you think they're just mere words? They're not mere words. As a child of God, your words have power. They have power. You should understand the power that your words carry. So you should be careful. You should be more conscious. You should be more conscious how you speak. You should be careful how you speak. You don't just speak because you feel like or you don't feel like it. You speak because you're guided, because you're directed. Because you know whatever you're putting out of your mouth are things that are supposed to build, are things that are true, they are honest, they are trustworthy. They can cause people to grow. Not things that can destroy. Because like they said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Higher exclamations. I don't die. God forbid. Who kill you? Who kill you? And then soon enough you have an accident and you're wondering why you had an accident. No. Let's be careful what we confess. Let's be careful what we hold on to and what we confess. So if God has said it, he will do it. God said it in the days of Joshua, in the days of Caleb, and five years after, it was manifesting. Yours might be five days after. Yours might be 
the blink of an eye, someone else's might be 17 years, another might be 25 years, another might be 50 years. Don't look down on people who are still in the waiting room. Some people wait longer than others. It doesn't mean that those people who are waiting for those long hours did something bad or didn't do something that God wanted them to do. No, because sometimes people make it like the good things you get from God are like a reward for some good things you did. And then those who didn't get those good things, it looks like they are being punished for not doing something that they should have done. It's not true. It's not true. I heard a servant of God say that marriage is not a reward for something good you did and then singleness a, a punishment for something you didn't do. It is not. Let nobody make you feel less of who you are because you're single. Let nobody make you feel less of who you are because you're married and you don't have a child. Let nobody make you feel less of who you are. There are just so many things. You are this age, you don't have a car. You are this age, you don't have a business of your own. You are this age, you don't have 10 million in your bank account. You are this age. Like, who says? Who says? Is, it God? Is there any place where God gave those kind of standards? There's no place where God gave that kind of standard. Am I saying you shouldn't be rich? No, that by, by all means. If you have to be rich, the Bible says money answered all things. There are lots of things that we can do when we have money. We can send people on missionary works. We can actually win souls for Christ because if we get to feed the hungry and we want to preach the message to them, they will feel somewhat connected to us because we have solved the problem of hunger. And so they'll want to know where these people come from, whom with their whole hearts will just solve our hunger problems before telling us anything. There are some people, it's your act of kindness that will cause them to give their lives to Christ. Some people, it's your diligence in obeying God and following God that will cause them to give their lives to Christ. Your diligence. You, yes, you watching me. It's your diligence that will cause some people to give their lives to Christ. So people, I don't know about you, but then you need to write that vision down and make it plain so that people can run with it and they can be able to cue in and support you where they need to support you. You need to be aware. You need to be convinced with what God says to you and begin to talk about it. Talk about it when the time is right, because we've learned in some other parts that you don't need to talk about everything because there's some things that you talk about and they'll go out there prematurely and they might be destroyed. Meanwhile, it's still in the incubator. It's supposed to have still been in the incubator for a time period to be able to grow strong bones and all that it takes to be able to stand and resist the enemy when the time comes. But you decided to send it out before it could even mature and so the enemy was able to destroy it. But then, one thing I know for sure is that when the time is right, to put some things out there, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you that it is done. I believe so. I am positive about it. So people, it has been another beautiful session on a chapter a day. Thank you so much for being here today. I pray that you're going to be here tomorrow again, same time, 9.30 and uh, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm sure we're going to have a small time together. So tomorrow is Joshua chapter 15. I'm sure Joshua chapter 15 is also going to be an amazing chapter. Like I said, probably these chapters are telling us about how the lands were being divided amongst the people. And Joshua was, and Caleb was saying that he was like 40 years when he was told and five years after he's still strong and ready to, to take over and ready to fight and gain lands for God. And how old are you again? You're feeling awkward. You're feeling bad and saying, no, you don't want to do this because you're too old. This guy was 40 years old. And this is him at 45, still wanting to fight and win battles and gain lands for, for his people. And you're saying, you're how, how old? You're 30 years old and you're worried. You're 25 and you're worried. Because you're looking at other people and comparing yourselves to them. No, you have a unique destiny. 
This is this man, Caleb. He was fulfilling purpose at 45. We didn't hear about him all the while through the wilderness and everything. We only started hearing about him when he was 40 years old. Will people remember you when you're no more? Can people remember you for anything? If there's nothing that people can remember you for if you're no longer here, please start now. It's never too late. I'm sure those five years will be five years that nobody's ever going to forget. The battles that Joshua fought for the people. The battles that Caleb fought for the people. Caleb was 40 years old when he went to spy the land. And now he's 45. They've come to the place where they're supposed to possess their possession. And he's still saying, give me this land. I have to possess it. This is what God said. Have you given up on yourself already? Have you given up on God already? Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Don't give up on God, people. God will never give up on you. So, people, it's about time we gotta go. And I hope that you're going to get really blessed. Welcome, Mr. Chavis. Thank you for coming. Um, some other person just got in here. I think I should know that profile picture. Um, I'm not sure. No, that's not Mom Annie Fred. Who is that? Some other person just got in here. I want to say hi to her before. Um, who is that again? I can see it. I can see it. I know it's one of my sisters, my great sisters in the Lord. I know it's one of them, so. But I just can't figure out who it is. <gasps> oh my God, that's so nice. Okay. So tomorrow is another day. Let's make it a date. Let's come back here and have a swell time together. It's going to be Joshua chapter 15. I just checked it out and he has 63 verses. People, that's going to be a long read. A long, long read. And I'm seeing some, so many, so many names in here. I hope I'll be able to pronounce them all right. Okay, so um, let's pray and hand over the session and... and hand over our hearts to God and pray that the word is actually going to be planted on our hearts. Our hearts are going to be fertile soil that the land is going, the, the word is going to be planted and it's going to bear fruits. So today, if you didn't remember anything that we talked about on this chapter, remember that you need to write your vision down and make it plain so others can run with it. And of course you write it down so that you can remember it in due time. Caleb could remember that God had said some things and things and things to Moses and this, this, this. And so he brought it back to Joshua and he was given an opportunity. If we don't study the word of God, we will not know the promises that are in the word of God for us. Oh yeah, it was mom or dad. Why, why did, why did I not remember? I was thinking, I was like, yeah, I know. And I just wanted to say, I think because I saw the wedding thing. I saw the wedding um, profile picture. It's Mom Odette Annie Abia. Welcome, 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 woman of God, pretty woman of God. Thank you, thank you for coming. And she says, bless you for the word of encouragement. And man, thank you so much. I really wanted to greet you before leaving here. Thank God that you actually wrote. I saw the profile picture. I was like, I know this picture. I know this picture. And then I was thinking, I wasn't sure it was really, really you until you wrote thank you so much mom on that annie thank you thank you hope married life is doing great hope is treating you well and i pray that god is going to continuously bless your union and that is going to be exemplary to a lot of people that are going to see it that your marriage will be a sort that people are going to look at it and desire to get married you know there's some marriages people look at and they feel like hmm I ain't going to get married. This marriage thing is not for me, you know. But yours is going to be so exemplary that people are going to say, of oh, the truth, the reason why God brought marriage to earth is good. Because I saw mom or that, and I know it's good. Yeah, it's going to be that exemplary in Jesus' name. And of course, every single day, you and hubby is going to look on the back. You're going to see that it was the day you love each other the least. So tomorrow... 
yesterday is going to be the day you loved each other the least because your love is going to grow from strength to strength to strength and of course all your heart desires are going to be granted like the bible says one chases a thousand two ten thousand so you all are going to chase thousands upon thousands and of course Bible says he will find a wife, find a good thing, and obtains favor from God. I know you're a wife material, so let the favor begin to flow. <laughs> okay, so let's pray and end the session for today. Tomorrow is another day, 9.30, same time, Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be having a chapter a day. It's going to be Joshua chapter 15. And like I said, we now have our audio Bible on TikTok. So you can't be so bothered that um, YouTube is too data consuming. TikTok is not so data consuming. So you can go on TikTok and be listening to the chapter of the Bible once a day. We've done all of Genesis to Deuteronomy. We've started putting out Joshua. We are hoping that we can continue putting out Joshua in real time like we're doing this. Like I'm done here. After this, I'm going to be able to edit that video and put it on TikTok. So we have Joshua chapter 14 on TikTok today. I'm hoping that God can give us the grace to be able to do that. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate you all. I am glad that you always come here, share us out. You always comment. You know, the encouragement is just so heartwarming. I don't take it for granted. I really, really do appreciate it. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray, oh God, that you're going to we seal every prayer with the blood, the, every request that we've made here today with the blood of Jesus. And we also pray, oh God, that you're going to do way beyond what we can even ask or imagine. Father, you're the one who brought us here and you're giving us this word today for a purpose and for a reason. Because you want us to be better versions of ourselves. Because you want to take us to the next level, oh Lord. That's why you're speaking to us in this very, very sensitive and cautious way, oh Lord. Father, I pray that you're going to continuously teach us your ways, oh God. Teach us your precepts. Cause us to hunger and test and yearn for you. Because your word says, blessed are they who do hunger and test for righteousness, for they shall be filled and obtain mercy. Lord, let that be a practical reality in the lives of your children this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, continuously speak to us, continuously guide and direct us. For those who are just waking up this moment to start their day, Lord, I pray that you're going to give them an awesomely splendid day. For those who are halfway their day or almost the end of the day, Father, I pray that you bless the rest of their day. That they're going to walk in favor, smiling from molar to molar because of the amazing things that you do in their lives. And Lord, I pray for those who are about to sleep like us. That we're going to dream dreams and see visions just like your word says. That in the latter days, young men shall dream dreams and old men shall see vision. Let that be our reality in the mighty name of Jesus. You say you give your beloved sleep. Lord, as we sleep, give us sound sleep. And by your grace, we'll get up tomorrow to continue with our activities strong and kicking to the glory of your name. Take preeminence, but now and forevermore. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and uh, amen. And Mom Odette uh, prayed for me. She said, The Lord increase you on in everything you think or do in Jesus' name. Amen. I receive it. Amen, and amen, and amen. So, thank you all, amazing people, for being here today. Tomorrow is another day. I've been your favorite girl. Princess Clinton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. I always get to say I love you so, so very much. Get to like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. I love you so much. But God loves you way, way more. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Ah, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, thank you so much. God bless you.